What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play Toy Story for the Super Nintendo. I'm What the Fnew, and in this episode, as you might see on the screen here, yeah, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, Sid is kind of the opposite of Andy. Whereas Andy takes care of his toys, Sid has fun destroying them. Yeah, he's one of those kids. So these two have pretty much gone to hell now. Sid's workbench. Make your way across Sid's desk, but look out for Sid. You can't really look out for Sid. What he means by that is Sid is going to be causing you trouble in his own unique way. And look, this place is perilous. You've got mechanical Kinect spiders here. Not Kinect as in like the Xbox peripheral nobody cares about. I mean, Kinect was this old um, toy. It was like Legos, except all of the pieces were made of metal. I don't know how you're supposed to get that star up there, by the way. I have no freaking clue. Because you can't jump off this chain. Well, technically you can jump off the chain, but you don't really go anywhere in terms of vertical movement. Wait for the fireballs. Ah, oh, shit. At least they gave me an extra hit there. Okay. Go, Woody, go, 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 go! <laughs> Whew! Okay. This is another one of those really perilous stages. You just kind of have to inch your way forward, slowly reacting to everything that's coming on down the line. Oh, jeez! Oh, I went face first into a yo-yo. And I don't think I nailed a checkpoint either. Yeah, we're all the way back at the beginning. Ah, oh, this level is crazy. By the way, check this out. So I can land on this thing right here, but not this, which also looks like it's clearly some kind of platform I can step on. That makes sense. And unfortunately, that's an element you encounter in a lot of old school platformers, is sometimes it wasn't entirely clear what you could and could not use as a foothold. Unfortunately, this game suffers from that, too. I love everything else. Like I said before, it looks amazing. And to be fair, it doesn't play badly, but there are one or two problems with it. I wouldn't exactly call it a true hidden gem because, well, it's Toy Story. It must have gotten something resembling attention when it came out. And this was back in the day where you, where it was a decent expectation to, that a Toy Story game might actually do really well. Because especially games that were based on Disney properties did uh, fairly good. They were pretty impressive back in the day. Of course, you already know that if you've seen my other videos that I was about to say that came out this season. Wow, all this time and I'm still in I'm still in 16-bit summer mode. There's a checkpoint. By the way, check out where they put that one up. That's hilarious. I'm not even gonna attempt trying to get that. Not even gonna attempt. Oh shit! Woo! That was a tense moment in sports. Oh, I forgot you had to do that there. Okay. We make our way past some yo-yos. And these aren't the last of the yo-yos either. There's... How? How are you supposed to get that star? I don't understand this. You can't jump vertically off of those things. We've established this already. I think we're almost to the second half of the stage here, and you get to see the other mechanic. Yeah, there's the checkpoint. Woody falls because he sees Sid coming, and just like in the movie, Sid's gonna use his magnifying glass to set Woody on fire. So now, I can't control Woody, by the way. He's... I... He keeps auto-running no matter what. I can only move him left and right. He can't jump either, so if you want to nail the... If you want to nab these stars, you have to come back for them. So, lead him to the bull. <laughs> that was a cool effect. Is that mode 7-2 with, like, the cornflakes there? I don't know why I'm even bothering grabbing these stars. They're not going to matter in the grand scheme of things. And you'll see what I mean by that as soon as we're done with this stage. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's just kind of jump over this one. The, luckily, the strings don't hurt you. It's just the yo-yos themselves. Ah, uh, here comes Sid again. And he's not, and even though it's seconds later, he's not even noticing that Woody's moved to another part of the stage. 
Okay, or another part of the workbench. And speaking of stages that should be way too big, this workbench is enormous. What does he need all of these yo-yos for? Okay. Once again, I'm... I try not to... I try not to hate on little game issues, like things that don't make sense if they're convenient for the player, or convenient for game design, because that's just how video games are supposed to work. I, I'm really careful about that these days, because it's just kind of a tired criticism. You see so many people pointing out those things, and when you really think about it, it doesn't really make sense anymore. Whew! More Mode 7 cornflakes there. <coughs> And there we go. That's the only stage I'm going to do legitimately past this point. Oh, wait, no, there's one more. Sorry, scratch that, reverse it. I might even edit out that little saying right there, just so I don't spoil the surprise. This is the Battle of the Mutant Toys. Buzz is somewhere in Sid's room, and you have to find him, but keep moving and look out for... things. Things? What kind of things? By the way, Scud. I love how they have the the dog's food bowl right there. Once again, that's a little visual cue that's really clever. You get bits and pieces, most of what the movie is about, but... Ch what?! Where did you come from?! Well, then. Okay. <laughs> Wrap you up so I don't have to worry about you when I come up here. Okay, dodge that. Jump here, wrap you up, narrate every single movement I'm making. Because people can't see it for themselves. This isn't like a video game or anything. Okay. I think you have a... I don't know what the physics are behind... Behind, um, swinging on... Uh, swinging from any kind of, um, whip hold or whatever you would call it and taking damage, because sometimes I'll pass right through things, sometimes I'll still get hit. I'm just saying, exercise some cautious movement when doing this. By the way, you can't just hold down the button here. You actually have to put in a little bit of skill to make your way up these particular whip holds. Jeez. You can turn yourself around immediately by holding the other direction, but at that point, you're just grabbing onto... Shit! Shit! Get off of there! You're just grabbing onto the same... No! One you're already holding on to. And then shit like that can happen. Nuts! Dang it. By the way, if you're wondering why I have such a strange collection of... Why I'm so erratic between cursing and not cursing. It's just one of those Mega Man things. I'm still in the midst of that project, and I'm still desperately trying to work out my language so I don't have to edit as much. I've got too much crap that I'm editing on top of it. So I, I'm starting to get into that mindset. I know a lot of, I've talked about this before, how a lot of people complain that they don't like editing, that it just takes time. And granted, I'm not gonna take away from that. It does take more time than just kind of syncing up the commentary and moving on. But at the same time, it's not near, compared to something like RTGs, which is like a review show, it's not nearly as bad. It's the fact that I'm doing both at the same time that I feel now I'm in a legitimate position to complain about it. I'm like, no, I don't like having the extra editing on top of what I already have to do. And I think that's kind of a fair position. By the way, I think we should just kind of fast forward back to where I was, considering how long it took me the first time. I'll see you guys in a second.
All right, back to where we died last time. All right, moving right along in the stage. Grabbing onto these. Cling, 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 cling. I hope that sound hasn't gotten annoying yet, because it's starting to bug me. Oh, that brief moment of silence where it goes away. Don't you hate it when games do that? Just constant sound effects? Do me a favor, guys. If I ever put, like, a low health warning or some kind of annoying sound that never stops in any of my levels, whack me over the head with a shovel. That's just poor form. All right, I think Buzz should be some... Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. No, you're not doing this to me. No, no, don't even start. Don't even s- Nah, nah! Oh. oh god. Where's extra health when you need it? Oh, and Buzz is right there if I could just get past this! Wrap you up. Here. Where is it? Where do I need to go? Spider? Oh, wait a minute. Can I just- Can I just go? Yes! Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot about- Oh, I forgot about that! The battle with the mutant toys! Damn! Alright, Buzz. Let's figure this crap out. How- how exactly does this work, I wonder? These- the physics of this are really weird. You're just kind of pushing these guys back. It's like they hit this invisible wall that you have. I see, okay. Okay, I've got the timing down for this. I've got- yeah, there we go! Oh, finally! 513 stars later. And, unfortunately, this is the last stage in the game that I'm going to do legitimately. Because, once you see this next stage, you'll understand why I say that. Trust me, I am not gonna make it through this. This is the Roller Bob stage, and it's like Run Rex Run, where you have to go through this stage, dodging all of these obstacles that get in your way. It's unlike Run Rex Run in the fact that it's fucking impossible! Well, impossible without tons and tons and tons of trial and error. And you'll see what I mean by this very quickly. See, I got nailed right there because I had no idea that soda can was going to be there. But it gets worse than that. Remember how we had RC chasing us in the last level? In this level, but it was kind of forgivable, even though we took up like half the screen because we could kind of sort of make our way through it. Now, we've got Sid covering the other half. There's no way you can react to all of the shit going on on screen and still deal with with that little movement. Like, I understand how you beat this level. You just kind of have to play it over and over and over again until you know what to do and where. I just don't have the time to devote to this shit. There's no way I can just spend hours and hours playing through this game over and over again because you only get five hits. I can't devote that much time to all of this because I've got other projects to move on to, as I've said previously. So, what I'm going to end up doing, because I'm going to die here. There's, there's no way I'm going to avoid this. I, yep, there we go. Game over. So what's going to end up happening for the rest of this project? I've gone through as much of this game as I can get through legitimately and still not drive myself completely insane. This is what kept me from doing the game blind, by the way. Like, I was watching a playthrough of this and just watching the Roller Bob stage, I understood what it was. I recognized it immediately. So here's what's going to happen here. We're going to start up the game and I'm going to show you the level select code. We're going- I'm going to let you see the entirety of that stage, but I'm going to be invincible during the whole thing. Yes, there's an invincibility code and there's a level select code. And unfortunately, to access the level select code, you have to turn on invincibility first. 
So here's what you do in the very first stage of the game when you're in Andy's room. My god, this is not this is a nice and colorful aesthetic. Holy cow, that's a difference. I almost have visual whiplash going straight from uh, Sid's room to this. Anyway, crouch down on the bottom shelf of the army men's uh, dresser right here for about five seconds. You'll notice my health star started spinning. I'm invincible now. I could get hit by this thing multiple times and I'm still not gonna die. The only thing that can kill me now is bottomless pits. And even then, I think I have infinite lives, too, so it doesn't even matter. Now, what I've activated the invincibility code. What about that level select code I mentioned? Well, here's what you do. Pause the game, press select. And there you go. You've just beaten the stage with a record seven stars minimum. So I'm going to meet you guys back in the Roller Bob stage here in a bit. And actually... Yeah, I think I think this is going to be the finale. There's just Roller Bob and then... No. Ah, we've got enough for one more video. Next time on Let's Play Toy Story for the Super Nintendo. I will meet you in Roller Bob so we can take on the final three stages of the game. Until then, I'm with the FNU. Later, everybody.